Section 171 of the Constitution, certain appointments can be made by the President without recourse to the Senate. For instance, the appointment of a secretary to, this, uh, the, the, to the government of the Federation, the appointment of a uh, head of civil service of the Federation, the appointment of ambassadors, representatives of, of government abroad, permanent secretary, and heads of inter ministerial departments, however designated, can be appointed without recourse to the Senate. If you look at the clear provision of section 171, subsection 6, you see that absolute powers to appoint these categories of uh, officials are vested in the president without any recourse to the Senate. If the National Assembly or the Senate has any problem with that interpretation made by the acting president, who is an eminent professor of law, a, a first-rate senior advocate, advocate of Nigeria, you knew what he did when he was the attorney general in Lagos State. Most of the landmark constitutional cases that we refer to today were initiated by, uh, uh, by Professor Yemi Osibaju. If I could so jump in there, he's a, he's a of, and I do hope that uh, they will ensure that you can hear me. We need to be sure you can hear. Uh, hang on a minute. Uh, we hope to, just to correct that so that he can properly hear and then we can put the questions in. Uh, Mr. Shito, if you can hear me, I'm, let me just jump in and ask. That's, there's a lot of uh, some backstory, if we could describe it as that, where they say some inconsistencies on the part of the executive because they say, on the one hand, you say you submitted his name initially, and then you say if he's rejected, you can represent him. And then another breath, you then say, oh, we didn't need to present his name to the Senate in the first place. So, and then another time, then, there was this conversation where uh, I think it was the head of the National Lottery Commission who, uh, when he was appointed, resumed. He was castigated by the presidency, only for him to then say, well, the presidency eventually now said they needed to forward his name for confirmation to the Senate. So, isn't that double standards on the part of the presidency? Can you pick and choose? who can be declared or submitted to the Senate? Uh, uh, there are no double standards here. And uh, as I speak here, I speak as a legal practitioner, and, those, and there are a lot of people out there who are listening to me who have superiority, superiority of ideas, who are much more experienced on legal matters than I possibly can ever be. So I concede that. But, uh, but my submission is anchored on the uh, provisions of the Constitution. If you look at section 171, subsection 1, and section 171, subsection 2, A, B, C, D, and E, as well as section 171, subsection 6 of the Constitution, you will see clearly that certain appointments can be made by the President without recourse to the Senate. Again, if you look at section 11 of the Interpretation Act, the office of the chairman, uh, executive chairman of EFCC, is a statutory appointment. It is governed by the provisions of the Interpretation Act. Now go and look at section 11 of the Interpretation Act. It gives the, uh, the president the power to appoint somebody into a substantive position, subject to confirmation of the Senate. But in the, in the interim, or even, he can, he, he can also appoint any person he desires to act for as long as he pleases. Look at the wording of Section 11 of the Interpretation Act. If you look at that wording of Section 11, clearly you will see that what the president is doing in sustaining Magu as the acting chairman is not in breach of the law. But if, in any case, if the Senate feels that what the president